Hey everybody, I hope you're all having a great day. It's Nick from The Bass Hookup. Back to do another video on where the bass go in the delta during the spawn and post-spawn, how to catch them. And I'll show you some of my favorite baits that I like to use for the bed fish and also for those post-spawn fish or maybe those big fish that are pre-spawn that are around those spawning areas. Uh, so let's just get into it. I like this type of video. It's, it's pretty simple, just on my desktop, but it's still informative. You guys can take something away from it. So here we go. Uh, I just want to start off by uh, going down here. This is our channel. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Um, I want to show you some videos that this is kind of going to play off of. So we did some videos in the past, um, how to find um, fish during the pre-spawn in the Delta, everything you need to know to find those fish, I'll give you guys some idea of where... I look for those pre-spawn fish moving up. I did a part one and a part two. And in this video, we're kind of going to, you could look at those areas where they were pre-spawn because they're going to be near those areas now during the spawn. So let me go over to the map now. We're going to do uh, this all in one video, hopefully. And hopefully it won't actually be that long. It's not very hard to find uh, the spawning fish. Or if you don't look, you don't want to sight fish. I mean, honestly, I don't really like sight fishing. I'd rather just burn down the bank because I'm not that patient. Unless it's a tournament and I need a fish, I see one on a bed and I need it. Other than that, I like to just fish. But I'll show you guys the areas that a lot of fish should be in right now. And, you know, that's going to up your numbers. It's going to put you around some big fish. So let's just get into that. And today I'm just using Google, Google Maps, satellite. Everybody should be familiar with it. I spend a ton of time on this thing. I mean... The week of a tournament, I'm on here every day. Here, the weather app, the tide app, I'm looking at everything. Half of what goes into fishing, especially if I can't get out on the water, which is unfortunately um, most of the time I don't get pre-fished, but I can do a lot of it right here on my computer. I could look at areas. I could look at the tides. I can look at what the weather is going to be like. We'll talk about kind of all those things today in this video as it relates to spawning bass in the delta and and the uh, post-spawn bass, so where they go after. It's going to be pretty quick. It's simple. I look at the weather, like I said, all the time. Most fishermen do, so I'm looking at the weather almost every day. And I've been on the delta in a few tournaments, and um, the weather seems to, ha to be pretty steady. The wind is what I look at, and it's been blowing out of the west, northwest, almost all the time. We might get a day where it blows out of the south, maybe a day it blows straight out of the north, but for the most part, it's blowing about this direction, northwest. It's coming straight out of the northwest, blowing this direction. What that tells me immediately when I'm looking at this map is the spawning fish, they need to go somewhere where it's calm, out of the wind, protected. They need somewhere where they could lay those eggs and they don't get all stirred up by two foot white caps, um, you know, rollers rolling into them and all that sort of stuff. So if I know this year the wind's been blowing out of the northwest pretty much all the time, changes every year. That's why I look at the, at the uh, weather app all the time because every year it could change. Next year it might always be blowing out of the south and all the beds are going to be on these banks on the southern banks where the wind's blowing over them. It's always protected. This year, though, blowing out of northwest, you're going to look for pretty much any flat bank, a flat bank with cover, toolies. It could even be a rock bank that has clean hydrilla, um, primrose, hyacinth pushed up against it. And the cover's key. The bass want to lay their eggs where after those – Baby bass hatch, they become fry, that right when they hatch, they could hide. It's, it's just built in. They're going to lay them where, those, where they feel like their babies are going to be protected. So, you know, they're going to lay them um, best spots. You have a big mat of primrose. You have tulies, some hydrilla mixed in, and there's a lane. Let's say there's just a lane, you know, from here into these tulies all the way into this hard shoreline. They're going to lay them all around the edges of these toolies, um, on the sparse toolies. Most likely, they're not going to lay them 
right out here in the middle, although it happens for sure. Um, the majority of them are going to lay them right next to that cover. So again, when those fry spawn or when they uh, hatch, they just move right up. And you guys will see them when this post spawn, and I'm sure you've seen them. There'll be a school of them just right on the edge of the primrose or the hyacinth. And they're up there because they're hiding. They're trying to survive. So it's easy. Again, looking for these spawning bass or areas that most of the bass are going to be in right now. This year, look on these like northern northwest banks. These banks over here are going to be the protected ones. And that's where those fish are going to feel comfortable to move up and spawn. And of course, all the marinas are good. Any marina. Again, if they're in the marina, they're probably going to be on that protected side, the northwest side. Um, in these big flooded islands like Frank Track, northwest side, Big Break, same thing. You know, it gets pretty rough out there. Um, all the marinas, any marinas, especially these, because, you know, these marinas are protected just in of themselves because, you know, all the berths and things like that. But they're also on the west bank, so they're super protected. The, these fish could be comfortable in here. Um, if you're looking down a slough, I'm going to be looking, you know, on these sides of the islands. When I come in here, I'm going to be looking on these sides of the islands, the northwest sides. There might be a fish spawning on this, the east side, south side. Um, of course, there could be fish there, but for the most part, if you want to really maximize the time on the water, you want to be looking on that northwest side there marinas anything you can you know fish those areas that's where most of the fish are going to be um, i always like to fish them pretty quick i'll get in there i'll fish i'll throw a top water i'll throw senko i'll throw a wake bait and i'll get into more baits but i will always end up pulling up shallow putting my trolling motor on high and just going along the bank and just seeing if there are beds one of the reasons I want to put this video out right now is because they have been spawning. Um, they moved up during the full moon in late March or so. Um, they've been up in April. But I feel like the majority of them haven't spawned yet. The water temps still aren't above really 65. Uh, especially with the cold weather that we just had, that pushed them off. It was a full moon. It would have been perfect if it was hot. If it wasn't cloudy, they could see the moon. I would have said, hey, they're all on beds right now. Like last weekend, a couple days ago, they're all up there. Since that didn't happen, I feel like we're going to get another wave in May. Fish are going to keep moving up as the water temperatures warm up. I've seen them year after year spawning in June in the Delta. So, But I feel like this year in May, there are going to be a lot of spawners. I just want to get this video out to you guys. And there's also going to be post spawners, so we're going to go over both. Um, so that's really the spawning baits that you're going to look for. And what I'm going to use to catch those spawning fish, if I'm bed fishing, if you watched the last video, I caught a couple bed fish, I like a, a, like a two-rod combination to go after those bed fish. I like one with a, a Ned rig, or I was using a Z-Man hula stick, just like this, a small bait. And I was throwing it on this Z-Man Power Finesse Shroom Head. And I was throwing it on the heavier Shroom Head so I could shake it and it won't move through that bed too much. I could shake it and get that fish's attention. And in my experience, I, the, these small, small baits, even the 2-inch little TRDs, will always, I could almost always get that fish to bite. Sometimes I even use crappie jigs on a big hook or on a drop shot hook. Because those big fish, for some reason they will end up eating that tiny bait. So I don't even mess around with like sweet beaver, uh, D-bomb, a jig, any of that. They'll eat that. It just, in my experience, takes me longer. They eat this faster. And I'm throwing it on straight braid. I'm throwing this little thing on a spinning rod because if I'm away from them a ways, I could flip it out there easily where, as on a bait caster, you know, it's a little harder to flip it, especially in the wind or something like that. Spinning rod, straight braid, I have plenty of power. I could hook that fish, get it to the boat, through the weeds, don't have to worry about it. But what I fire those fish up with, and a lot of times they'll eat it, is a big bait. That's my two rod combo. Spinning rod, something tiny, you could choose what you like, 
TRD, you know, whatever you like, something small. And I use a hook beefy enough like this where I don't have to worry about it bending out in straight braid. But the first thing I throw in there is a glide bait. And I like throwing glide baits compared to like a Huddleston, um, like a soft plastic. I was throwing this exact bait, this Depth Slice More 175 glide bait in this color, the Golden Shiner color. I don't know what it is. I've caught a ton of fish on that bait. Um, they're really hard to get. You don't need it. What I like about it is this bait sinks fairly quickly, so it gets down. Like if I flip it out on that bed, it drops straight down onto the bed, and it sits there. So when the hooks hit the bottom, it just sits upright, and I'm going to show you guys some underwater footage also in this video of a bed fish coming after this bait, and it just sits upright, and I can sit there and twitch it, and it flashes in its bed. It either eats it or gets mad enough to where I can pull that out, take my little finesse worm, throw it in there, wham. Usually it only takes, you know, five minutes to catch a bed fish. It's simple. Just not a lot of baits, two baits. I could almost guarantee if you had these two baits on any bed fish that was locked on, okay, or pretty close to being locked on, you're going to catch it. So that's my two baits for the bed fish. Now, if I'm just searching around, again, I'm just, I'm going to throw something like this. Not a lot of guys throw it in the Delta. I love this bait in the Delta. Usually when I get bit on it, it's a, it's a solid fish. A lot of five pounders on this bait, five, six, seven pounders. And I just don't think they see it and they absolutely crush it. Something like this, just a double prop bait. And you're throwing it out there. You're moving along the bank. And again, these fish have spawned or they're guarding fry. So when you're going along the bank, one key thing on these banks where there's going to be most of the fish is if you could find clean weeds, there's going to be fish there. If you find clean hydrilla, there's going to be fish there. If you find hydrilla, I don't want just a thick wall of hydrilla from the boat all the way to the bank. I want hydrilla that has holes in it. Those holes are probably where the bed was at. It's clean bottom. The hydrilla didn't grow there because that bass cleaned that out, put its bed. It's either still on that bed or it spawned and all the fry are sitting right around there. And you throw this bait in there, work it real slow, and they can't resist it. They come up and annihilate it. So I'll use this to search around you know, while I'm going down the bank and also just pitching a Senko, pitching a Senko into those holes, letting it go down. If I don't get bit after it's sitting there for three seconds, reel it in pitch it to the next spot or a drop shot. I mean, if you guys saw my last video, I, I was throwing a drop shot, so I don't want to leave that out of there. Drop shot usually will get bit as well, but this bait really to me targets big fish. And that's about it for, um, you know, where I would look for the spawning fish. Again, the, the Northwestern banks where the wind's been blowing over these skinny, uh, sloughs that are running North to South because you know, uh, it's blown out of the west. This whole side over here is gonna has been calm all year. Same thing. Just look at the map. Look at all these sloughs that run, you know, north to north to south, south to north, whatever you want to say. Um, those are great spots to look. The delta is huge, huge. So you can <laughs> you can spend all day. I could never cover all of this in one day. Cover it thoroughly at least, um, because you could go all the way up to Liberty all the way up here to all the way down south of, you know, Tracy and way down here. So there's so much water to cover. But again, if you cover the areas that have been calm and protected, um, you're going to find fish. And if you pull up to a spot, my rule of thumb is if I pull up to a spot, I pull up here and I don't see life. I don't see shiners. I go up shallow. I don't see any bass. If I don't see that, I'm not going to spend any time there. I might be there one minute. I might pull in, look, nothing, I'm gone. I don't want to fish on protective water. So I'm constantly running, constantly looking for where there are fish. Because if you find a spot with fish, you'll know it. You'll see them. So let's get on to the post-spawn bite. For the post-spawn fish, those fish most of the time are guarding fry. Or sometimes they get a little funky. You know, they don't really want to bite. Um... But again, the baits I would use for those post spawn fish, one being something like the devil's horse, throwing it out there, their garden fry, this thing comes over, just sitting there, they come up and blast it. 
Or even one, even the females that have spawned out, they're not garden fried, they'll still eat this. If I'm going after big, big fish, um, I'm throwing this. I'm also throwing some sort of wake bait. I'm throwing, you could pick your poison. There are a lot of wake baits. Um, one that's fairly inexpensive, and I've caught a lot of big, big fish on it, are these um, rat style baits. But the Spro BBZ Rat, not that expensive. Makes a great knocking sound. Makes a great wake. You could reel it kind of fast. It'll stay up. You could reel it slow. And I used to throw the MS Slammer. The mini MS Slammer, Slammer the tail, was basically you could put a trick worm in as the tail. And there was something about that thing that, that I think it was the worm. I've caught so many giant bass on it in the Delta. But... They, I can't get them anymore. So the, the Spro BBZ Rat, if I could find it, it kind of has a tail like that. And it just slithers in through the water like a, like a worm, a snake. And they can't stand it. They, they just eat it. I mean, I've caught 10-pounders on back-to-back -back casts in May um, on that bait. So, and then also, you know, you could always flip a drop shot around, throw the Senko around. Those always catch fish. But the devil's horse type of bait, wake bait, during the post spawn are great baits, you know, to know, to even just to throw to know if you're around the fish. Because if you're around where the fish spawned, they'll be fry. And when you cast out there and you're reeling through them, you'll see the fry hopping out of the way, just going everywhere. And, and usually if your wake bait's coming through a ball of fry, hold on, you're about to get hit. Because that those bass are around there. So those are the baits I would use for bedding fish, for searching, for post spawn. And I want to just touch on the weather real quick. So if I have a real windy day right now, and I, I think they're all on beds, which they're never all on beds, but you know, I was planning on going out there, hoping it was going to be calm, sunny, um, and go out there and find some bed fish, practice bed fishing. And I have a day where it's blowing 15 to 25, cloudy, sprinkling maybe, you know what? Don't put your head down. That's even better than it being sunny and calm. Way better. Just go along these banks like I'm talking about that are protected. You know those bass have been spawning. And on that type of day, you know I'm throwing basically, if it's if it's raining right now, tomorrow it's raining, I'm going out. I'm putting a wake bait in my hand, and I'm tossing that wake bait almost the entire time on those calmer banks. I'm going to toss that wake bait, wake bait almost the whole time. Uh, maybe the devil's horse here and there. But those two baits will get you big, big fish. And a lot of the time, you know, you think you could finesse a big fish into biting. You know there's a bank where there's big fish, and, and guys go there, and they try to finesse them up in the morning. But in my experience, usually it doesn't work. You might get one. But if you go there with a big bait, those fish can't stand the big bait. They either got to follow it and because they're curious creatures or they're going to come up on those nasty weather days. They're going to come up and just eat it. So if you guys are looking for a big fish right now, that's what I'd be doing. So we're going to go um, look at some underwater footage. And uh, I'll talk to you guys about, you know, how I got this bass into biting with those two baits that I was talking about. So let's go. All right, guys, I find this fish, uh, put the camera down there. This fish wasn't really locked on the bed. There was a couple fish cruising around, um, and I start out with that depth 175 like I've been talking about, just to bring that fish's attention back to the bed. If you throw a small bait out there, most of the time, it's not even going to pay attention to it. It's not intrusive enough. But with these big baits, they just don't like that bigger thing being around their bed, thinking it's another a smaller bass or something. Bait, uh, bluegill, whatever it may be, coming onto their bed, eating their eggs, and messing around with them. So it draws their attention in, it gets them fired up, and it gets them really paying attention to that bed. So once you're able to do that, like this fish, it keeps coming, looking at it, turning around, coming back. So I throw this bait in there a few times, about three times. I pick it up, and I go to the smaller bait. The one-two combo. So I throw the big bait first. I go to that smaller hula stick. Throw that in there. Work it over the bed. And right away, the fish is nowhere 
to be seen. It comes out of the toolies and boom. So I wanted to add this in there. Right after I catch this that fish, I release it, it swims off, I throw the depths, and here it comes right back again. Eats it right away. And you can tell it's the same fish because it has a cut in its tail. So if you go back to where I slow-moed it eating the hula stick, you'll see that same cut in the tail. So I just thought it was interesting. I thought I could draw the attention of a fish that was swimming around in the background um, earlier because there were like three fish back there. Uh, I thought I could get one of those to come up. But the same fish I just caught, here it comes again, wants to get hooked again. But I don't end up catching it. I just take this out and I go searching for some more. So hopefully you guys found this video uh, helpful. Hopefully you guys have a better time on the water and more success out in the delta finding some spawning fish, post-spawn fish. This time of year is a great year to get out there and uh, find those fish. And if you find the fish, you find big groups of fish. They're going to be around that same area all year round. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.